What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over making new enemies in our first person shooter tutorial series. So you probably know how to do this because we've already made these war zombie enemies. However, we can make it much easier on ourselves to make new enemies and change different things about them, such as their health values, um, the actual appearance of them, like with their mesh, their collider, their health bar, uh, their weak spots, all these different things. So it's pretty easily changed. Basically what we're going to do is create a base class or transfer the class that we have into a base class so that we can easily get this new class or any, you know, any new enemies that we want to be this new class that has all the data we need. This is a pretty simple episode today, but it is very important, especially because in the next episode we're going to be getting into uh, weapons and ammo is doing specific damage because right now they actually do not do that and I want this to be across the board no matter what you're hitting but because of that I want to demonstrate using these different enemy types and also adding different enemy behavior so I don't have a specific anim BP logic uh, for this new enemy that I have this is just zombie I'll add animations in the next episode but for now it doesn't really matter you could make your own anim BP. But we're going to have two, ty two types of zombies now. We're going to have our war zombie. And we're going to have our regular zombie. So, again, this should be a pretty simple episode. But if you want to get caught up to everything we've done uh, to this point in the tutorial, I believe we're on episode 26. I'll leave an iCard right here in the top right corner. You can check out everything we've done to date. And then I'll also leave this episode right here, which is where we first created this enemy that we've been using to shoot this whole time. We haven't done much with it other than add the progress bar, allow us to shoot them, and add the collision to it. To it. But now we're going to be able to create additional enemies, and soon they're going to be able to actually do things like walk around or even chase the player. All right. So to get started, what we're going to want to do is go to what we were calling our base enemy BP, or our default enemy. So I have this base enemy BP. And in here, I know I'm clicking on more zombie BP. But when you click into your base enemy BP, you should see this. You should see a mesh, you know, your progress bar, any sort of the variables or things that you want up here in the components list. And that was good. That was good if we only had one enemy. But when we use the term like base enemy BP, like we do here, then really we don't want to define any features about this enemy that are not going to be um, transferred across all enemies that are children of this. So what I mean by that is, you know, if we want the enemies that have different meshes, we probably shouldn't have the base enemy BP have a mesh of the zombie. If we want them to, uh, some of them to have different logic when they spawn, then that logic should probably not be in the base enemy BP. It should probably be in the specific enemy BP logic that is going to do, you know, whatever it is. Like if one charges up as soon as they spawn and no other enemy does that, well, we'll probably want to do that logic only in the enemy that charges up. So it's the same deal here. We don't want to have this mesh for uh, the parent. And we don't want to basically have any logic in here that is going to hurt us in any way. So what I've done is I have created uh, children of this class by right-clicking on base enemy BP and creating a child blueprint class. This will automatically make one, and it'll be a child of base enemy BP, and you can call it war zombie BP or whatever enemy you're using. Feel free to name it accordingly. And what we're going to do is go into here, and you can see that your class settings, the parent class should be your base enemy BP. You can set up your mesh and everything in this class, but first, before you do that, because it'll get overwritten, go into your base enemy BP. You can keep the logic as is, because this logic is pretty basic right now. doesn't do anything that uh, specific characters need to do or not do, so we can leave it alone. But we do need to get rid of our mesh. It can stay here because it is the parent after all, and all enemies probably should have a mesh. 
However, uh, we want them to have different meshes. So what I've done is I've clicked on mesh, I've gone to mesh, and I've hit the little yellow arrow that will be here if you have a mesh on here. And that disables the mesh, it takes it off the base enemy BP. Since we're never really going to be spawning in a uh, base enemy BP. We're going to spawn on the children instead. We're going to spawn more zombie, regular zombie, or a boss, or something like that. And uh, you guys may have heard me throw this term around a lot in other series or other episodes. But this base enemy BP is basically a wrapper class. So what it does is it contains all the data that is uh, shared among the characters and the other enemy blueprints. But the unique data still is not a part of this and it's a part of those specific blueprints. Okay, so like I said, taking off the mesh and the base enemy BP. You don't really need um, an atom class on here anymore by default. I didn't realize that I left that. It's not gonna hurt anything because you don't have a mesh to play it on, but you might as well make that none. Then after you've made those changes, go into your children blueprints and set up everything accordingly. So I'm going to click on my mesh. I'm going to assign my animation blueprint and I'm going to assign my skeletal mesh, probably in the other order for you, like mesh and then anim BP. But either way, just make sure you set these things up. And then, you know, make sure that you're setting the proper location, rotation and scale for this enemy. And anything else that you may want to make specific to them. Now, in the character itself, I will have some specific logic. They'll have specific AI as well, but nothing right now needs to be unique. This character is fine as is. It's just given us the freedom to make new characters easily. So now that you've done that, it's very simple to go to your zombie BP or your other enemy BP that you want to add. Literally make another child a base enemy BP. Call it whatever. And then you're going to do the same thing with it. So again, I don't have an anim BP yet because I just didn't make it. But quite literally, if I come in here, I can assign my mesh, which is my zombie, my anim BP. I made the animation blueprint. I just haven't filled it out yet. And now I have a new enemy and it's that simple. Now, certain things like the weak point hurt box and the regular collision box actually stayed with the other characters because base enemy BP has them. You can, of course, disable these for characters that don't need, uh, you know, maybe their whole thing is a weak point hurt box or they don't have a weak point. You can always disable those later. All right. And then at that point, you can basically make new enemies very, very easily and very quickly. And there's a few more things I want to show you. These are really just tips and tricks. But when the enemy dies, we actually want to do some logic to remove the progress bar from sight and to disable the collision. So right now, when we kill the enemy, if it has an anim BP, they do play the animation for dying, but their collision is still intact. I can actually walk over this and the progress bar is still visible. Without the animation, it looks like nothing happens. And we want to fix that. So for now, what we can do is remove the progress bar and uh, delete the body if we want. Or we could actually leave the body for now, disable the collision, and then remove the progress bar, and then have an effect that cleans them up later. So this is very simple. But really all we're going to do is if we go into our code, and we can look at our default enemy really quickly. We just said a boolean is dead, and that's what triggers the anim BP, but we don't have any sort of logic to actually kill the enemy. So if we go into our enemy.h, default enemy.h in this case, we're going to make a new function. And we're going to call it die. Then we're going to go into our CPP. We're going to write this function. And all we're going to do in it here is set up the logic that we want for collision and uh, the progress bar. 
So for the code, we're actually okay. I'm not gonna handle that stuff in here, but I'm gonna write another function. This one's gonna be a blueprint implementable event to clean up anything that we've done in blueprint. So it'll be blueprint implement implementable event void. Uh, I'm just gonna literally call it die BP. Something like that. And it's going to call the blueprint logic, as I've said. So we're going to call die BP in die. We don't have anything else in die at the moment. And then we'll put a comment above this. Let's actually clean this up a bit and let's say perform any blueprint logic related to this enemy's death one last thing we need to do is actually call our die function but we set the boolean is dead to be true here uh, after they've taken damage and the health is less than or equal to zero but in this case we also just need to call die all right and then once the engine is open again we can go into our enemy We'll go into our base enemy VP, assuming that all characters should do this. Even if they they won't down the line for now, it should be fine. And we'll literally just call event die BP. And we are going to disable the actual collision on the enemy. So here we go. We're going to get the capsule component and we're going to set collision enabled to no collision. That way we can't run into the capsule component anymore. We're also going to grab the health bar and we're going to set visibility. We're gonna leave new visibility unchecked to basically say that we want the visibility to be false or hidden. And now once the enemy dies and let's go ahead and defeat one of our enemies. You can see that the progress bar went away and I can now walk through the enemy. So we've cleaned up our enemies to be able to do exactly what we want. This works if you have an animation or not, just that if you don't have an animation, the character is going to look a little bit weird since we don't ever delete the bodies as of now. That's something we can get to later because we may want to do a special effect. Like I said, they fade away or kind of melt, disintegrate, that sort of thing. We don't always want them to just do the same animation. And so we're gonna to have to set up a, a little a bit of logic to determine what animation we should do for the death and what logic we want to perform. But anyway, guys, that's all I got for you today. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please subscribe. It helps me and the channel more than anything else you can do. And I just really appreciate it. I'm going to give a huge shout out to my YouTube membership and Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for everything, all the additional support and love. I really, really appreciate it. And I can't wait to see where all these series go. If you had any issues with this episode or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community, or we'll be happy to help you out for free. And like I said, guys, that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys. <laughs>